In Riverside County, engineers are literally writing the book on how to effectively control runoff water from developments. The Flood Control and Water Conservation District is creating a best practices manual for developers so they can design and build their projects to reduce stormwater runoff and improve the quality of the runoff water. The concept is called Low Impact Development, or LID, and the approach the district is implementing is a departure from the traditional groundwater management practices. This whole low impact development concept is trying to think differently about development so that we can minimize the use of water, maximize the capture of water, and improve our ability to use the water cycle. To demonstrate the effectiveness of low impact development concepts concerning groundwater management, the district decided to use its own property as a test facility. The landscaping here had been around since the 60s. It looked old, tired, we were on the edge of town. We were becoming the entrance to Riverside, so we wanted to update our look. That coupled with the fact that we were putting together our LID manual for development within the county, kind of came together with the idea, well, let's, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Let's show what you can do with a, an industrial type facility to bring it into the modern world, to the LID compliance world. So in your, your, your typical development, you've got a lot of impervious area that, that typically generates runoff because that rain hits the impervious area and runs off the project. That water is then lost to the environment because typically once the water leaves the project, it's, it's collected through a collection system, a storm drain system, and then shunted out as fast as we can from the city so that we don't have flooding issues. Developments also use a lot of turf, typically. And, and although turf can infiltrate runoff, during the summer months you're using a lot of water to maintain that turf. And so in, in California it's just not a sustainable way to, to, to manage development. So the types of technologies we're incorporating here are called low impact development technologies. And, and what they try to do is mimic, do a better job of mimicking the natural hydrologic function of the site. The new landscaping includes a variety of best management practices, or BMPs, that both reduce runoff and help clean the water before it leaves the property. There's actually several elements to the project that we either are testing or demonstrating here at the facility. There's, there's the permeable concrete. We also have permeable asphalt. We have permeable pavers. These are all different types of paving technologies that create basically a infinitely impervious window to the subsurface soils and allow that stormwater runoff to be collected and so by incorporating pavements that are pervious, you allow the water to infiltrate directly into the subsoil instead of running off the surface. One of the major project elements that we incorporated into the project was a, a complete retrofit of our landscaping from uh, the sort of turf-based, kind of historic California-style landscaping to a landscaping that is water conservation friendly. By using California-friendly landscaping, you can have the same infiltration that you would have had on your turf but during the summer you don't need to use nearly as much water, which is likely coming from an imported water source, as you would with the turf initially. We are also incorporating in the project a landscape filter basin, a bioretention basin. It uses an engineered soil to basically treat the runoff as the water percolates through the soil column. We also have planter boxes that we've incorporated to treat roof runoff. The district is making a special effort to test the effectiveness of its groundwater management approach by carefully monitoring water runoff and collecting data that show how well the system is working. So these machines we're sitting next to are the automatic samplers, water quality samplers that we use to test the runoff from our uh, low impact development uh, facility. We have two sections of porous concrete, we've got two sections of porous asphalt, we've got the bioretention facility. Um, and we've got a control section of parking lot. All of those facilities are connected by subdrains to this testing facility and ultimately to these automatic samplers. And what these automatic samplers do is they collect samples of the runoff from each of those BMPs uh, so that we can measure flow rate and we can measure the uh, collect samples to take to the lab for a chemical analysis. We've put in the porous pavements, the, the low water the landscaping, we've put in the water quality filtration systems but how do they work over time? And I think that's what the real uh, benefit of this facility will be, is it works good in the lab, it works good when you first build it, but what about five years from now? Does this stuff continue to work? A lot of the ideas behind LID are concepts that sound good, and a lot of the guidance that's been published is really designed by anecdote rather than designed by science. And we're hoping that this project can move kind of this industry forward to a design from data rather than a design by anecdote. One of our goals for this project 
is to really test whether we made good choices in the development of our design manual. And so this project allowed us to take a look at, you know, were the designs effective for the engineers? Were they able to actually efficiently incorporate this into a project in the way it made sense? As development is starting to come back in the Inland Empire, I think we're going to see more and more of it. Your water quality and water conservation, your LID features don't have to be a separate standalone, but just part of the site design. I think it'll go a long way to promoting this type of development. As you drive around in the world, you will notice as you see commercial shopping centers and business parks, you'll see ribbon gutters in the middle of driveways. That is because the sites have been designed to run from the pavement into a collection system and usually you'll see landscape crowned rather than in a depressed area. Simply reversing that grading, really use the same amount of dirt to accomplish your design, but drain to the landscaping rather than away from it. Off of the pavement and on to the landscaped area where it can be collected and treated before discharging is a fairly simple thing and really doesn't require a giant shift in economics, just a shift in thinking about how runoff's managed.